Chapter 546, A Typical Movie Scene Li Xiao's way of appearing was very unique. Gaotsong and Nailin K had assumed that Li Xiao had used the excuse that he was not feeling well to escape and hide. In the end, he had simply appeared while pulling up his pants. As Lu Xu was trying to guess which member of the heavenly network this lord had ties with, he realized that there were no ties at all, a heavenly king himself was the lord. Lu Xu now wondered whether Li Xiao's control over the Luo City black market had something to do with the heavenly network, or was it a decision Li Xiao had secretly carried out? If it had something to do with the heavenly network, then Ye Ting would definitely know about this. But Lu Xu felt that the situation was not so complex. Li Xiao thought that no one would recognize him with large sunglasses on. But in reality, Li Xiao's figure and face shape were prominent features of his. Anyone who had dealings with him would recognize him in an instant. Furthermore, this pair of sunglasses could not cover his big, fat face. Lu Xu had simply no energy to ridicule him. He did not think that Nye Ting had suggested for Li Xiao to do this, because Nye Ting would probably not allow Li Xiao to deceive himself. Besides the secret practitioners like Wang Zhe, which family's practitioners had not come across resources regarding Li Xiao. Li Xiao laughed. How is it? Is there anything that you are interested in? Gao Song took a deep breath. Heavenly King Li, long time. What heavenly king? Where is the heavenly king? Li Xiao panicked. Don't scare me like that. As a comrade of the Heavenly Network and a comrade of Li Xiao at the Kochang Island remains, Lu Xu was so ashamed that he wanted to hide his face. Gao Song's face darkened. Heavenly King Li, you don't have to be like this. Nonsense. Li Xiao panicked. I am a lord. I don't know any Heavenly King Li or Heavenly King Ma. Gao Song and Nailin K were speechless. Did you have so much confidence in your camouflage skills? Everyone in the black market quietened down and took a look at Li Xiao. They had made themselves live in such unfavorable circumstances so that they would not be caught by the Heavenly Network. Lu Xu could feel that the reason why the Heavenly Network relaxed their attitude towards secret practitioners was because his identity was of a bystander and could see the change in the Heavenly Network. But these practitioners at the lowest level could not feel these effects. Thus, their fear towards the heavenly network was still very strong. They had run back and forth to find a black market that was more orderly. But in the end, they realized that the boss of the black market was a heavenly king? Why does this feel like a movie, when an actor playing a walk-on role runs back and forth and suddenly runs into the boss? This was the heavenly king, Li Xiao. Some people had heard of him. After all, everyone would have heard of his glorious deeds, even if they have not seen him before. Now, comparing his characteristics with the Lord, wasn't he quite fat and quite robust? The rookies were flustered, very flustered. On the other hand, the veterans felt a sense of delight for some reason. They changed their way of thought and felt that something was not right. Why should they be flustered? A heavenly king had secretly opened a black market to make money. Who cares if this heavenly king only did so because he was going mad from poverty? But with the protection of a heavenly king, why should they be scared? Gao Song did not expect to meet a heavenly king here. Nailin Kei's family had recently rapidly expanded their influence in the gray realm of training. Everywhere they had gone was as easy as crushing dry weeds and smashing rotten wood. There were no black markets that would be able to fight Nailin K's family head-on in the first place. Under these circumstances, each family kept a secret agreement. To the respective families, each market was unoccupied. They would occupy each of these unoccupied markets before they moved on. This process prevented conflict between families as much as possible. If they did not do so, each family would only benefit as much as an old fisherman would. After all the black markets in the country had been taken up by the big families, then the respective families would discuss their competition with one another. This was the secret agreement. 
But Gaotsong absolutely did not think that they would bump into a heavenly king in the most strategic position in Luo City. What could they do? This family could not defeat a heavenly king, no matter how impressive they were. Lu Xu buoyantly watched the scene unfold in front of him. He really wanted to see what would happen between Li Yixiao and this family. It was at this moment that things took an unexpected twist. Nalan Kay, who had been using the collar of her jacket to cover half her face, revealed her face. She said coldly, Li Yixiao, do you remember me? It's you. Li Yixiao turned pale in fright. This was the first time Lu Xu had seen Li Yixiao so panic-stricken. He was astonished. What had Nalan K done to make Li Yixiao flash such an expression? Once she finished speaking, Nalan K brazenly charged at Li Yixiao. But she did not attack him, instead, she erupted a massive amount of energy in a narrow space. Open. With a crash, Nalan K took the chance while Li Yixiao was in shock to send Li Yixiao into the wall. Using her waist as a pivot, she hit Li Yixiao with her shoulder and forcibly sent him through the wall. At first, when Lu Xu heard Nalan K shout, he was still happy. He even had the time to check his water meter. In the end, he was shocked too. This move from Bajiquan one had forcibly sent Li Yixiao through the wall. There was even a large hole in the wall of the bomb shelter. Of course, this was different from the Bajiquin before the magical era. He observed a feeling similar to when he had practiced his sword with Li Xianyi from Nalan K, vitality as large as a mountain. This girl had forcibly entered the Dao Tu through the sphere of Bajiquin. Furthermore, she was a class B. Before she had attacked, Lu Xu could not perceive what class she was from. But once she attacked, Lu Xu sensed that Nalan K was also a Class B expert. She probably did not accept the amnesty of the Heavenly Network, unlike Li Yixiao. Nalan K did not pursue relentlessly and fiercely attack. In reality, she was just taking advantage of the situation. In a serious fight, she was still not worthy of being Li Yixiao's opponent. Nalan K did not seem to be worried that Li Yixiao would fight back. Instead, she coldly asked, why did you leave without saying goodbye? These scenes made Lu Xu very satisfied, as if he was watching a movie. At first, had thought this was an action movie where Li Yixiao acted like a pretentious prick. But as he continued watching, he felt that this was becoming a typical romantic action movie. In the past, Lu Xu had never thought that any typical sentimental scenes would happen to Li Yixiao. But now, it seemed that things were different he could only sigh. Reality often surpasses art when you are not careful. Even Cheung Yao III would not dare to write such a story. Lu Xu looked at Gao Tsong's expression. He was also still in shock. He probably did not know that Nalan K would encounter such a typical plot even after so many years of remaining single. But Lu Xu felt that Li Xiao was even more impressive. He was so focused on soliciting business that he could not even clarify which family Gao Tsong was a broker for. Time to watch from the sidelines. Lu Xu sat behind the stall with a crowd who were eating melons. He watched the scene unfold with keen pleasure. Chapter 547 A Hopeless Relationship Anxious, Li Ixiao stood up. Now you've beaten me. What else do you want? I only want to ask why you left without saying goodbye. Nalan K was hissing with anger, ready to erupt any time like an active volcano. Why don't you go and ask your mother? Don't you dare speak ill of my mum. Nalan K raised her brows in annoyance. The spectator's eyes kept switching between Li Yixiao and Nalan Quebec. Were they about to quarrel? What an interesting show. Li Yixiao snapped, okay, everyone, I'll let you be the judge. Back then, it would be okay, if your mom looked down on me for being poor, because I could always work hard to get that money. Sometimes I am really jealous of those guys whose mother-in-law was dissatisfied over their lack of financial means or pure incompetence, because at least they could alter the situation by putting in some effort. However, your mother was quite unique. She only paid attention to horoscope, date of birth, the auspiciousness of facial and palm features. 
how do you want me to change those? Lu Xu could hardly hold in his laughter, as did everyone else around. Bro, that was really too much. Nalin K took a long time to think of a rebuttal. But that doesn't mean you should leave without saying, goodbye. Your mom said I am destined to be an obstacle in your life. For God's sake, what else could I do? Li Yixiao was irked. Hurry up and tell me what you want. If you want to fight, so be it. I, Li Yixiao, am never afraid of anybody. Sure. Nalin K laughed due to pent-up anger. Let's fight. Today, only one person between us can get out of here alive. The spectators drew a started breath. Was she serious? At the moment, some people started to move out secretly. The Bajiquan earlier was already frightening enough. Who knew how much collateral damage would be involved when they unleashed their full power? Besides those secret practitioners, Lu Xu was shocked to see even Mr. Gao Song was inching towards the door too. Just when Lu Xu was about to pack up his chives and follow the crowd, suddenly someone stepped on his chives amidst the flurry. The foot froze. Lu Xu slowly raised his head to meet Wang Zhi's apologetic eyes. Brother, I'll pay for your chives. That's all? You have to apologize to my chives. From Wang Zhi's distress, plus 666. Wang Zhi became nervous. Brother, don't be stupid. You see, they are about to fight any time. If the two class Bs happen to hit us by chance, it won't end well for either of us. You want to run without saying sorry? You think that's all right? Lu Xu sneered. Wang Zhu wanted to leave at once, but he was immediately pulled back by Lu Xu. He almost fell to the floor under Lu Xu's immense strength. From Wang Zhu's distress, plus 999. Wang Zhu was a man adaptable to circumstances. Knowing that his life was more important than his face, he really made a bow to the chives with all sincerity. My apologies. But it was too late for him to leave now. Li Yixiao and Nalin Kei were already coming towards them during their intense fight. Neither of them seemed willing to hold back their powers. In fact, Bajiquan was more effective in short-range combat and it was no rival against Li Yixiao's mighty tiger fist. The entire bomb shelter was shaking. Dirt fell from the ceiling due to the tremor and there were dents in the walls under their fists. Wang Zhe almost fainted in terror. The two were approaching him at lightning speed. Li Yixiao's tiger sign sprang from his back and Nalin Kei defended herself by avoiding his attack agilely. In this period of time, she had retreated with more defensive than aggressive moves. Waves of energy blasted outwards in the clash of their powers, dragging the spectators into agony. Nalin K roared in fury, Li Ishiao, how dare you hit me? Realizing that she had a point, Li Ishiao paused his movement. But Nalin K seized this opportunity and threw another punch at him, reigniting the warfare again. Wang Zhou was scared. Brother, we must leave now before it gets too late. Li Yixiao hurled his fist towards Nalin K, who evaded the blow. But his punch, unstoppable, banged into Lu Xu and Wang Zhe like an artillery shell. At that instant, Wang Zhe was so scared that he peed his pants, while Lu Xu suddenly exerted force from under his feet and delivered a ferocious blow against Li Yixiao's fist. An immense blast exploded on the spot with a loud bang, forcibly sending Wang Zhe, Gao Song, and others behind Lu Xu flying backwards in the air. Nalin K erupted. How dare you hit Li Yixiao? All of a sudden, Nalin K condensed all her strength and dashed towards Lu Xu, who took a small step back in defense. In the next instant, countless beams of invisible sword energy shot out from Lu Xu's sea of qi with a loud ring. Their sharp blades swept towards Nalin K like a flood of swords, and their energy was as powerful as a dragon. Nalin K was stunned. Never had she expected that the teenage chives vendor she had just despised was actually an expert comparable to Li Xiao and herself. Furthermore, his first move was deadly. The spectators were shocked. Am I dreaming? Three class Bs on one night. 
Is this really a bloody black market for secret practitioners? Where did they all come from? Actually, Lu Xu had no intention to harm Nalin K and he only wanted her to back down. Honestly speaking, Nalin K's angry counterattack was unexpected, for it showed she still had feelings towards Li Xiao. Invisible sword energy whizzed past Nalin K and sliced open numerous scratches of blades on the walls. To the spectators, it looked like a casual mural. Li Xiao could not be any more familiar with the sword energy. He gasped in shock. What's your relationship with Li Xieni? Lu Xu's aura blade had always been kept secret by Nia Ting, for it was imperative that Lu Xu had some unknown trump cards up his sleeves if he were to be sent overseas. Thus, even Li Xiao had no idea about Lu Xu opening up his sea of qi. But his aura blade was simply too unique and Li Xiao recognized it at once. However, Lu Xu had no intention to stay any longer with Li Xiao and Nalin K because the sustainability of his aura blade power was worryingly questionable. He was not yet strong enough to counter two class B pros simultaneously. Before the spectators could recover from the shock, Lu Xu took to his heels and darted to the outside, leaving his chives behind. He had expected Li Xiao and Nalin K to chase behind, but the second he made it out of the bomb shelter, he realized the two had resumed their fight. There's nothing wrong with Li Xiao's mother-in-law's opinion that Li Xiao and Nalin K are destined to be an obstacle in each other's life. For some reason, Lu Xu began to see Li Xiao's mother-in-law in a respectful light. In the past, he used to think horoscopes were unreliable, but now he had a somehow different stand. Chapter 548, Shared Experience of Life and Death Lu Xu was gone, but not his legend in the black market. In fact, Lu Xu, Li Xiao, and Nalin K knew the real situation the best. Lu Xu had shown mercy during his Aura Blade attack, but he would not survive a joint collaboration between Nalin K and Li Xiao. Certainly, though, Nalin K and Li Xiao had to admit Lu Xu indeed had the power of taking down either of them if he decided to do so, based on the power of his Aura Blade and his hidden flying dagger as a descendant of the Hall of Swords but it was totally different in the spectators' eyes. What they saw was a man who could counter Li Xiao's fist and then immediately forced back Nalin K with hundreds of beams of aura blade. He had seemingly effortlessly fought back two Class B experts. How mysteriously powerful! Moreover, he did not seem to belong to the Heavenly Network. Else, why would he have fought with Li Xiao? But since when did such a strong person appear from the secret practitioners? Wang Zhe was now shivering in fear recounting his treatment of Lu Xu, followed by a sense of admiration and worship. As a secret practitioner, he must have been a hero to be able to fight back against a heavenly king and a hidden expert of a big family. While worshipping Lu Xu, the spectators soon retreated to the outside, leaving the two fated enemies to resolve their own conflicts. Li Xiao was not a moron. Despite his insensitivity towards romance and feelings, he knew he could not bring himself to kill Nalin K. Therefore, a better way out of the fight was to escape. During their fight, Li Xiao suddenly conjured up his tiger sign, seemingly ready to hurt Nalin Quebec shocked. Nalin K quickly switched to defensive mode in preparation of bearing the blow. At this very moment, Li Xiao ran off. The Heavenly King had fled just like that. But Li Xiao made an attempt at saving his face. I'm not afraid of you. It's simply because as the Heavenly King, I don't want to waste my energy on you. As a matter of fact, Nalin K had regained her senses. It would be fine if she wanted to fight with Li Xiao until the end of time, but what if both of them were taken advantage of during their conflict? Who was that swordsman earlier? Now, no one knew whether he was a friend or a foe. Although he had spared them a chance earlier, what if it was just for show? In this world, one could never judge a book by its cover. The next day when Lu Xu went to school, he realized there was a heated discussion going on when he stepped into the classroom. It was about the incident at a black market the night before. As the saying goes, there was no concealing the truth. Besides, in the presence of so many secret practitioners, it was impossible for them to keep the incident a secret. 
Some of them had even posted it on the Golden Foundation forum. As a result, it had become a widely known fact that a fight took place in a Luo City bomb shelter last night that involved three Class Bs. One was their principal Heavenly King Li Xiao, another was the eldest daughter of the Nalin clan, Nalin K, aged 29, and the third, an extremely mysterious expert, had effortlessly fought back both of his rivals. There was no mention of the black market and it was simply referred to as a bomb shelter. In the post, the publisher's worship towards the mysterious expert was apparent. His description of the crisscross or a blade was as vivid as a movie scene. Other than that, people were keenly interested in the various versions of love stories between Heavenly King Lee and Nalin Quebec. Some claimed that Li Xiao had seduced the woman but abandoned her in the end, while others affirmed that Nalin Kei's mother had consulted the great master of the Dragon Tiger Mountain regarding the lover's horoscope, and only to be told that they were fated to share a life of conflicts together. Nowadays, the public attention on practitioners was just the same as that on popular celebrities. Back in the magic-deprived days, teenagers liked to gossip about celebrities' affairs. But now, their focus had been shifted to practitioners. Even commoners longed for the mysterious world of cultivation, including the gossip there. Heavenly King Lee, who had been missing for a long time, had finally returned to the school. When Lu Xu walked past the headmaster's room, he happened to see Li Ixiao biting his pen, distress openly written all across his face. Li Yixiao's eyes brightened at the sight of Lu Xu. Lu Xu, do you know how to write reflection letters? Lu Xu's expression darkened at once. I've been a good student since I was young. So I never had to write reflection letters. He walked into his office and took a look at his letter. There were only a few words on Li Yixiao's reflection, which was titled by a reflection, followed by the introduction that went, My dearest heavenly king Ya. Yeah. Lu Xu almost shivered in shock. Are you sure addressing him like this is appropriate? That's what they taught online, Li Xiao replied, confused. Well then. All the best. Lu Xu was expressionless and was ready to leave. At this instant Li Xiao suddenly asked behind his back, it was you last night, wasn't it? Lu Xu turned to meet Li Xiao's gaze. After two seconds, he laughed. Yeah, it's me. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 666. I'd been suspecting so since I saw you selling your chives. You annoying little brat. But tell me, since when did you become so strong? Li Yixiao mumbled, feeling unfair, since it was you, why didn't you help me fight that mad woman? Lu Xu did not deny it because he trusted Li Yixiao's intelligence, although the man was indeed quite reckless. Gao Shenin was not a nobody, which made it quite easy to prove his non-existent connection with Li Xianyi. In this situation, despite Li Yixiao's ignorance of Lu Xu's sword training experience with the old folk, he was well informed of Lu Xu's possession of the bone mask that could alter his facial features. Therefore, it was natural to associate the incident with Lu Xu in spite of the lack of concrete evidence. Why should I be involved in your past love stories? Lu Xu said with a smile, what happened between the two of you? Speaking of which, we have experienced life and death together multiple times, Li Ixiao exclaimed, looking melancholic. Then shouldn't you two be very close? Lu Xu was in bewilderment. No. What I meant was we have had quite a number of fights, and every time it almost got both of us killed, replied Li Ixiao. There must be something wrong with your understanding of, shared experience of life and death. Lu Xu decided to change the topic. Why did you choose to become a lord in a black market? Did Heavenly King Ye permit it? Am I not writing the reflection letter? Li Ixiao sighed, looking stressed. Yet, his face suddenly lit up. How do you find the name of the lord? One day I came across a story that goes, Mahakasayapa gave a smile a one at the Buddha holding up a flower. I checked the encyclopedia and realized the story refers to one who has thorough understanding about Zen. Then it reminded me of my own name. So, Buddha and I must be fated too. Lu Xu found it difficult to catch up with his logic. Does Buddha know? 
Did you ask whether he's all right with you taking his name? Chapter 549, Work Together to Control the Black Market Li Xiao seemed to be very pleased with his title as lord, and indicated that it complemented his name. He suddenly put down his pen and asked, Lu Xu, why were you at the black market? I was selling Chinese chives. We grow Chinese chives at home, Lu Xu said and laughed buoyantly. Don't trick me. My two eyes of wisdom have seen through everything. Li Yixiao's eyes were bright and piercing. Going all the way to the black market to sell Chinese chives? Even changing your appearance? Who are you trying to cheat? Lu Xu bit his gums. If no one recognized him, then it would be much easier to explain. But if he was recognized, there would be no way that Lu Xu simply came to sell Chinese chives after carefully changing his appearance and entering the black market. Li Xiao did not wait for Lu Xu to reply. He winked and asked, Did you get a haul of goods from Japan that you want to get off your hands? From Li Xiao's point of view, with Lu Xu's current identity, he could not buy good things off the black market. If he had really wanted to buy something, he should go directly to the Darkness Kingdom. The black markets of the secret practitioners were considered low-end. From Li Xiao's knowledge, a majority of the inherited tools and mythical objects in the country were in the hands of the Heavenly Network and the big families. Furthermore, they were only available in small quantities. It was very hard to find these items in normal black markets. Lu Xu was also thinking about his problem. He now had over 90,000 magical stones. If he converted everything into cash, he would not be able to finish spending it. Before Lu Xu had encountered Nalan K and the others, he did not think much of it. But after meeting this big family, Lu Xu suddenly had a thought. Each big family greatly wanted their children to rise in rank within the Heavenly Network. They were willing to spend more resources to support this effort. This was another reason why the respective big families gathered magical stones. Now, Lu Xu had magical stones. Many families had some tools and mythical objects. Even the collection of gods could have objects like deep sea white sand. He did not believe in China, with its vast territory and abundant resources, the big families did not have precious treasures. At first, tools and mythical objects were all collectively called tools. But slowly, objects that were near their elemental origin like mystic water and deep sea white sand, as well as tools with weapon spirits like black dragon spear and Xian Ting sword became known as mythical objects. Thus, mythical objects became the term for objects that were of higher level than merely tools. As for whether there was anything more powerful than mythical objects, at least the Darkness Kingdom had not encountered any. Within the Darkness Kingdom, there were people who said that Coral's Gungner could be considered a holy object above the existing mythical objects. But till present day, there has been no final conclusion. Some tried to give the holy objects above mythical objects a definition. There were two kinds of holy objects. The first was that they were able to grow with the strength of its host. In the future, it may become another level of mythical object. The second type was an almighty treasure passed down from the ancient past. During the magical era, everyone started searching for many objects from scratch. Thus, these definitions had slowly risen up, but they were not definitive in any way. This was the best era, as everything in the past had been overthrown and renewed. It was like humans discovering new continents. Whoever reached the new continent first had the right to define the continent. Lu Xu thought about it and said, I have magical stones that I want to sell. But I'm afraid that casual clients would not be able to afford them. So I thought of getting into contact with the respective big families. Li Yixiao gasped in shock. So many magical stones? Casual clients won't be able to afford them, let alone a few thousand pieces. Um. Lu Xu thought about it and cleared his throat. Ahem, around that amount. Lu Xu did not dare to say the truth. He was scared that he would shock Li Xiao, besides, people now were not particular about concealing their wealth. It was not too late even if he only revealed the truth when he was dealing with the big families. 
but since it was a cooperation, they had to work out a win-win situation. Li Yixiao said, I'll take this under my wing. I will help you handle everything, including anything regarding Nye Ting. But it's only a few thousand magical stones. Even if Nye Ting reproaches us, it shouldn't be a big problem. Don't worry. I, Li Yixiao, am very particular about righteousness. I will definitely not hand you over. It was great that Li Yixiao was willing to bear this. But Li Yixiao had mistaken the amount of magical stones Lu Xu owned. As for whether Li Yixiao would be able to handle the actual amount of magical stones when the time came, that was another problem. He could bear a few thousand, but what about tens of thousands? Sure. But I have one request. I hope that everyone will be able to exchange their mythical objects for magical stones as much as possible. Lu Xu thought about it and said, if not, I'm afraid that they will not bring so much cash with them. Li Yixiao smiled. Which family cannot bear a small cost of a few billion? They all have good cash flows. Don't worry. The families within the country were enormous. They could still bear a cost of a few billion, or even tens of billions. Lu Xu thought so too. One should never underestimate the financial groups of these organizations. They were simply for the public to see. Some things, the things that people exposed to the public eye were simply the tip of the iceberg. But there was one problem within these big families. The reason why they were so large was because these families better understood that money begets money. They invested their money into industries with big profits. To these people, money was only money. On the other hand, depositing their money into the bank was a foolish decision. To them, the interest from the bank was not considered money. Under these circumstances, there was probably no family that could take in 90,000 magical stones in one go. I insist that they bring goods to exchange. If not, the deal will fall through. Lu Xu was thinking that there was no point in him selling so much just for cash. He could sell even a few pieces and get money. It was only wise to get hold of even more training resources in the current situation. Okay. I will pass the message to them. Li Yixiao waved. But even with your own brother, you should keep clear accounts. What do you think about a 5 to 5 share? As he said this, Li Ishiao felt slightly guilty. It was such a large amount, yet all he needed to do was to contact the big families and bear the responsibility for Lu Xu. For this amount of effort, a 5 to 5 share may be too much. He carefully looked at Lu Xu. Before Lu Xu could speak, Li Ishiao said, how about 4 to 6? Lu Xu laughed and looked at Li Ishiao. No. 3 to 7, Li Ishiao seemed to speak with generosity. 3 to 7. I can't go any lower than this. I'm still doing a self-criticism here. Nia Ting had not stopped me from taking over the Luo City black market, but I'm still facing a lot of pressure here. Lu Xu did not want to argue with Li Ishiao. Li Ishiao did not know the actual amount, thus he had no way of estimating his predicted profile. But Lu Xu was different. He was very clear of exactly how much value he had in his hands. 9.9 .9 to 0.1 share. Lu Xu knew that if he did not open his mouth, Li Yixiao's expectations would never be lowered. Li Yixiao's face darkened. Brother, this is my first time seeing decimals in these shares. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 999. Chapter 550, Finding a Secret Master. Li Yixiao had never thought that he would encounter such a low ratio. People normally split shares 4 to 6. Even in the worst case scenario, the ratio would be 1 to 9. How did he end up with decimals? Brother, do you have some misunderstanding of what win win means? Li Yixiao was shocked beyond description. If Lu Xu did this by himself, he would have to first face pressure from Nye Ting. Furthermore, he did not have much time to make a living by wandering from place to place. Even if he had wanted to contact the families, he could not even find the door to their residence. 
Without Li Yixiao, he could not fulfill this task. But Lu Xu did not intend to loosen his grip. My lord, there are some things that I cannot say now. But I assure you that even though your share is only 0.1, your profits in the future will definitely be above 10 million. I will not let you work for nothing. If Lu Xu were to say this to someone else, they would definitely not agree. This was like writing an IOU. Will the profits really be above 10 million if you say it will be above 10 million? What proof do you have? But the person Lu Xu was working with this time was Li Xiao. This was different. Of course, if he really wanted to work with someone else, Lu Xu did not want to work with someone he was not familiar with. No matter whether it was Lu Xu or Li Xiao, both of them trusted each other. This was a friendship they had established back when they were at the Kochang Island ruins. Back then, while killing Nojoa to Kenobu, Li Ishio had secretly taken the initiative to flee and left Lu Xu alone. Although he was sure that nothing would happen to Lu Xu, but thinking about it, he was in the wrong. Li Ishiao thought carefully about it for a long time. If the final amount does not match up to your words, I won't be happy. No worries. Lu Xu heaved a sigh of relief. At least he had Li Ishiao to help him. Mia Ting had wanted to allow Lu Xu to become the ninth heavenly king and send him overseas. But Lu Xu did not want to agree. This made Mia Ting want to make things difficult for Lu Xu. He wanted Lu Xu to understand that there was no profit to be made within the country and Lu Xu should set his eyes on the entire world, instead. But in reality, he still did not know what Lu Xu had done at the collection of gods. If Coral had not appeared, he was not sure whether Takashima would have successfully advanced to Class A, but Lu Xu's image would be destroyed just for the sake of 90,000 magical stones. Now Lu Xu was more comfortable. He destroyed his image to stop Takashima, not for the magical stones, he was still in the wrong no matter how you put it. Suddenly, the door of the principal's office was quickly pushed open. Lu Xu turned around and gasped in shock. Nalin K. But Nalin K did not recognize Lu Xu, since he had used Gao Shenin's appearance last night. Nalin K, wearing a thick jacket, fiercely walked over in large strides. Li Yixiao. Lu Xu wondered, people would call others by their full name when they were at their angriest. Of course, this differed depending where you lived. It was acceptable in China, but overseas it may not be. If the name was especially long, such as some names of those in combat tribes, there would be some problems. If one wanted to shout their partner's full name during a couple fight. Calapizo Tanfortista Brados Thambuthos Jesford Lotto, what was I saying again? You would forget what you wanted to say even before finishing their name. From what Lu Xu had heard, Nailin K seemed to be quite upset. She angrily slammed Li Xiao's table. Don't you want to fight? Why did you escape yesterday? Did you think that I wouldn't be able to find you if you ran away? Li Yixiao hesitated. There is a student around. Give me some face. Nailin K looked at Lu Xu. She coughed and suddenly fell silent. She pushed her hair that had fallen in front of her face behind her ears. Ahem. Student, if there is nothing else, please return back to class. Okay, Lu Xu did not say anything else. He bowed his head and left. Thank you, principal. Lu Xu had just left the room when he heard Nailin Kei's thunderous voice. Li Xiao, where are you going to run this time? Lu Xu stood at the corridor and glanced at the teachers who walked out of the staff room, looking at the principal's office in shock. Lu Xu wanted to help Li Yixiao, but this was his family affair. There was no point in him being involved. Nailin K would not want him to hit Li Yixiao and Li Yixiao would probably not want him to hit Nailin K either. From the manner in which Nailin K was willing to give Li Yixiao some face, Lu Xu felt that they could not settle this in a short period of time. Furthermore, Lu Xu felt that the two of them were well suited for each other. If they wanted to love and kill each other, then let them be. Which couple did not have small conflicts that were easily solved. But from the looks of it, 
the two of them would be fighting for quite a long time. When Lu Xu returned to the classroom, his classmates had not stopped their discussion. Everyone paid close attention to what had happened last night, a secret master appeared at the Luo City Black Market. Since when did a swordplay master suddenly appear within the country? Did he have any ties with Li Xianyi? Many people knew that Li Xianyi did not have any sons. But he had once taken in a half-apprentice called Chiyu. Everyone knew the reason why Chiyu was called a half-apprentice. Wasn't it because Chiyu did not like practicing the sword, but loved practicing his punches? Chiyu. Many people would associate it with an anime character when they heard this name. The both of them indeed used their fists, but they were certainly different. Chiyu was simply his given name and his surname was Du thus his full name was Du Chiyu. Du Chiyu, like Li Xianyi, was one of the nine major directors in the Golden Foundation. But all along, he had never taken an interest in common affairs. He only focused on roaming about and training like an ascetic monk. No one knew where Du Chiyu went. Even Li Xianyi had difficulty finding him. The reason why Li Xianyi represented the Golden Foundation had to do with Du Chiyu. Du Chiyu was very strong, but only agreed to all of Li Xianyi's decisions. Li Xianyi himself was very strong. But before the dawn of the magical era, their resources were on the decline. The major reason why the Golden Foundation took Li Xianyi seriously was because Du Chiyu only recognized one teacher and that was Li Xianyi. Other than Du Chiyu, no one outside knew whether Li Xianyi had taught anyone the art of the sword. Many families started to look into resources regarding the secret master. They made use of surveillance footage to narrow down lookalikes. Some even bought information from the secret practitioners who had been at the black market last night. Some said that this expert had introduced himself, but this answer was not reliable. A secret practitioner called Wang Zhe said that the expert called himself Kasayapa. The families were speechless. This couldn't be his real name, right? In the end, someone found footage that showed the person's appearance. The footage at night was blurry and hard to see. The first family to have found the secret master's real identity was the Nalin family, because Nalin K and Gao Yi had met Lu Xu face to face. Thus, when they compared his appearance to the photos of the family members, they instantly recognized Lu Xu. That's him. Gao Xini. Gao Yi pointed at the picture and said calmly. Everyone within the family looked at each other in blank dismay. Since when did the Dian and Gao family have such an expert? And such a young one at that? After Nalin K's family got hold of the information, they started circulating it. There was no point in keeping this information to themselves. Why not exchange vital information with one another? In the end, while Lu Xu was attending lessons in the afternoon, he was shocked at the distress points written in the record. From Gao Shini's distress, plus 117, plus 119, plus 213. doesn't mean to be happy Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we better